What's up, gang? It's Delta from DeltaIsGaming.com. Happy Monday, and we're going to explain to you the sigils in Veteran Milster Marina or Non-Vet, how to use them, what the purpose is for them, and what they actually do so you can start using them. Getting more questions on how to complete Veteran Milster Marina, and I think a big problem with people is they don't understand the sigils, and they really don't use them. Use these suckers. Here's how. Before we step in here, I want you to understand the scoring of Milster Marina. So if we go to leaderboards here, uh, wrong thing, leaderboards. Vet Maelstrom Marina, what's my top score? 4,100, I'm not even on there anymore. I'm gonna get a better score. But anyways, the scoring here is based on each round you have, not the total arena, is worth 3,000 points unless you use a sigil. Every sigil you use, you knock that down by 750 points. The purpose of understanding this is that if you're not trying to set the world on fire and get one of these top scores, like a little 14 Inferno Nugget, use the crap out of these sigils. Because the, really the only downside is your score. So if I'm not going for a top score, like you know trying to improve my score, I just use them and blow through the thing. So here's what they do. Another thing to know is that at the start of each round, not the overall level, will respawn these sigils, okay? So you have four, sigil of power, you got the shield, you got the cup, and you got the speed. So four possible, minus 750 each is gonna give you that low score. But it doesn't matter if you're not, if you're just trying to complete it. So let me kill this guy. You stay there, guy. So obviously the speed one is speed, right? Sigil of haste. Now they last for 30 seconds, as you can see me going around here and they stack. So if you wanna get more than one and stack it up, you can, in 30 seconds per uh, round. So once these mobs respawn, it will refresh. So let me just clear this little round here. There you go. Get burnt, son. So it's the round, not just the spawns, round. That's important to know because if you're doing a long round, like let's say stage seven, You'll need to time when you use these very specifically. Now, well, let me get my buffs up. Quit hitting me. Burn! And see, they respawn. So they'll go away, they'll come back, and you see my current score, 2250. So I used one sigil, I got one, uh, one little score knocked off. Okay, so the sigil of healing, the cup, that's going to give us a flat amount of healing. So you see right there, it's 2. Point, what? 2.4k, 2.4k. It's nice if you use the Igneous Shields buff on your Dragonite because it will increase the healing. Though I haven't seen it crit. So it's basically just a stable amount of healing, which is nice for like Stam Templars or Stam builds that lack maybe significant healing in comparison to magic. Now my favorite one is the shield. The shield basically gives you flappers. So if you're going against a range target, it reflects it which is like gives everyone basically the ability to have Dragonite flappers. And that's what it does for you. Uh, it does make you more sturdy, I think. I don't know if your resistance goes up necessarily, but the added flappers without being a Dragonite, the reflex is the real reason I love the shield. So let's see if we can get him. What are you doing there? What you doing there? We're trying to make a video. Are you, are you glitching on me? Perfect, glitch video. Okay, well anyways, he's gonna chill out there. And now you have the sword. So the sword here does increase your damage, but it's not like, it's not a ridiculous amount. So what I do is I use the, the sword or the ax, whatever you wanna call it, for a burn phase on a boss. Now I don't know the amount it increases your damage, but it's significant. So there's various stages that you guys should probably use power-ups in your advantage. The final round in round six can be really, really painful for certain classes, certain builds, except if you prep the round early. What I like to do is the previous round, unweb four of the totems, leaving one exposed. Then what I do is I bring this little mob right over here, get this uncovered, grab the other, the uh, power up, the damage power up and nuke the boss. You can actually nuke the boss with high DPS just with one drop and not even messing with the big old guy that comes out at 50% health. So my tip to you is get the boss around 60%, drop the webs, get the power up and kill it in one shot, making that round much easier.
The third spawn of round four in the seventh stage is critical for non-shield stacking or non-Dragon Knight characters who use the defensive rune. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have three archers. Usually I'll try to blow one up right away, but if that other mob spawns in the back, you're gonna have a hard time beating them without flappers or without the defensive rune. So think about using the defensive one for the three spawn here. Boss round in stage eight can be very easy if you get the power up right away. So what I like to do is lay some traps on top of the first totem, grab the power up, and I can literally kill the boss at almost one finishing, especially on a Sork Overload build. So what I do is just do this, and you can get it one or two drops, specifically if you use that offensive power up to start. A lot of people struggle with the final round, specifically this boss stage right at the beginning where you're gonna get a day drop. So I recommend doing, if you're going to struggle with the day drop, grab the healing or the heal uh, passive, the cup. So what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have a day drop that spawns and you're gonna have to heal through it. What I like to do is area damage on the boss because once you get to 70%, it's not a problem. If you're struggling on this phase, use that health power up to start, even though I typically don't on most of my runs. So a quick recap on the sigils. Number one, there's four of them that you can use. A healing one, a reflex sturdy one, a speed one, and a damage one. So basically they take 750 points off per round that you use one. You can use all four, they stack. So hopefully this gives you some insight in how to use them. And my suggestion to you is if you're struggling with this Vet Maelstrom Arena, use the power-ups. There's no downside if you're just trying to complete it. Coming for me, I spent about eight to 12 hours in there the very first day to get my complete. And it was very frustrating. And I found myself not using the power-ups and going, why am I not using the power-ups? I'm not going for the world first score. So go ahead and use them. It's a nice satisfaction getting that complete. Once you do it once, it becomes a lot easier every substantial, every other time you do it. So continue to work at it. It's hard, it's frustrating, but it's a good sense of accomplishment once you get it done. And I hope this power up video helped. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe. More videos coming around the corner.